we're going to be talking about the proprioceptive system. And this again is one of our hidden senses. It is the message that our body gets through our muscles and our joints about where they are in space without needing our eyes to rely on telling us this information. So it's very much an unconscious awareness. It also gives us information about grading of movement. So for instance, if we have to walk through a doorway or we have to maneuver ourselves between people and furniture, this sense gives us information about how to move around without knocking into something. It also helps us to know what the optimum position would be on a chair. So for instance, if you go and sit down and you sort of missed your chair and you only sit halfway on it, your proprioceptive sense will give you that information and then it allows you to move to a more optimum position. It also helps us to grade or work out how far we need to stand away from other people when we are talking to them or when we are close to them. So what happens with this sense as well is when there's a problem, we rely on our vision to give us lots and lots of information about where we are in space. Now I want us to start off by doing a little test. So firstly, I want you to, to put your arms out to the side like this. And then I want you to slowly bring your index fingers so that they touch each other in front of your nose. Now put your hands back to your sides again. And now I want you to close your eyes and do the same thing. So you close your eyes, put your arms to the side and then bring your index fingers together to touch and see if you are going to miss them or, oh, and I've touched mine. More often than not, I go past, but that gives us a sense of what our proprioceptive sense is like. So, um, and also what it is, is for instance, is if I say to you now, where's your right leg? You don't have to look down to see where it is. Your proprioceptive sense will give you that information. So when children have sensory processing difficulties, we often see sensory seeking behaviors. And examples of this might be children bumping and crashing against each other or into furniture. They might um, crack their knuckles, suck their fingers, chew on their fingers. Uh, they might be uh, leaning onto other people or furniture. So parents often say to me that my child's always leaning onto me. And it's because they get that feedback from the ground or the person to give them in that information about where they are in space. Some children even use their heads and they might be pushing it against the wall or against the floor to try and seek that information. We also see that some children just fall on the floor intentionally. So when you ask them, why did you just drop down on the floor? They will just say that, you know, there's no specific reason. It's just because they get that feedback from the floor when they do that. What we also see is that some of these children might be bumping into other children, they might be pushing them around, and then they often get into trouble for that. They also might be chewing on their hands or their fingers or straws or anything they can find to chew. It might be edible or unedible things. Um, they sometimes kick with their legs into the chair, um, but they constantly need that sort of feedback from the surface that they touch. We also find that the children um, struggle to understand heavy and light. So the concept of heavy and light is often very difficult for them. And they can't tell you when something is heavy or when it is light. The children also frequently bumps into others and knock things over, which causes lots of problems for them. And then they are often known as children that hurt animals. Because what happens is when they pick up a dog or a cat, they either hold them too tight and, and hurt them, or they drop the cat or the dog because they are not holding them firmly enough. So they are usually quite uh, uh, dangerous around, around animals. And then lastly, when they play with toys, they often break the toys. And again, they get into trouble, but it's not purposely. So they don't purposely try and break the toy, but it's just the force that they use is too much for the specific item. So now we have to think about how, we, how can we support our children with the proprioception difficulties. And what really helps is if we engage in activities that contracts 
and stretch the child's muscles. So any sort of hard work activities is really, really helpful. And I'm going to give you lots and lots of examples. But firstly, I just want us to think a little bit about when are we going to do these activities? So are we going to do it uh, before a child engages in a specific task? Maybe it's before they're going to do their handwriting or they're going to play with a ball. Or are we going to use some of them afterwards because we want to calm them down? Uh, or again, it could be before because we want to try and wake them up. So it's just thinking about when we are going to use it throughout the day. Also, we need to think about where can we do it. And actually, we can do these activities anywhere. It could be at home, in the classroom, outside, anywhere we need. We can always think of some of these activities that we can incorporate to help and support our children. Now, when we engage with these activities, it's always good to think about how often do we want to do it throughout the day. So for some children, it might be that we only need to do some of these tasks a few times, but for others, it might be more regularly throughout our day. So let's have a look at some of the examples of the activities that we can do. So what we can do is we can engage in lots of deep pressure activities. So those are the sort of activities that's going to give lots of deep pressure to our skin, as well as to the joints of the body. So it might be that we would roll them in a blanket and then we push really nice and firm down to apply lots of deep pressure to the skin. It could be that we massage their arms, their legs, their hands before they're going to engage with any specific activity. It could also be where we use an exercise ball and I really, really love this activity, is taking a big exercise ball and ask your child to lie down on the floor. It could be uh, on their back or on their tummy. And then you roll this ball over your child whilst applying lots of deep pressure on this ball. So what's happening is the weight spreads and it really gives lots of deep, deep, deep input to the skin. And it can again be really calming. I once had a child in clinic who came to see me for coordination problems and we were doing some handwriting at the table and again he struggled to sit still and uh, so I suggested that we try some of these calming strategies and I asked him to lie down on the carpet and then I rolled this exercise ball over him with lots of deep pressure and firstly I did it whilst he was lying on his tummy and he really really loved it, he was just so relaxed and then he turned over and he wanted me to do it on his front so again, I rolled the ball over him, his arms, and then he pulled up his T-shirt because he wanted to feel the texture of the ball on his bare skin. So again, seeking that tactile input. Uh, and obviously, after I've done that, I explained to the parents why I did it. And I then invited them to attend one of the sensory talks. And a few months after, they did attend one of my talks. And they said they bought the ball and they use it every day. And it just works so well as a calming strategy before he goes to bed or before he's going to go engage in any activity that might result in him feeling a little bit overwhelmed. So again, that's a really, really good strategy. You could also use a strategy where a child just put their hands on their head and give themselves some nice deep compressions down firmly through the neck because that, uh, for our older children, especially in the school setting, can really help to just make them feel a little bit calmer. And then, of course, we can do activities where our children weight bear on their arms. So that would be something like doing a cartwheel, maybe doing some walking on hands while you hold your child's legs. It could also be an activity where you use either the exercise ball that we've talked about before, or you could use a different type of ball called a peanut ball. I don't know if you know this ball, but it's again, it looks like an exercise ball, but it's shaped like a peanut in its shell. Uh, what's quite nice about this ball is when you lie on it or go over it, it won't tip to the sides. So that's a, a really good item that you can use where your child could lie on their tummy, roll over the ball and then prop themselves on their hands when they get to the other side. And then they can prop themselves back and forth, back and forth, or they can play a game where they stand on their hands, uh, propping over the ball, and then they throw maybe a bean bag to its skittles or something like that. But again, that sort of deep pressure through the arms is really calming. You could do activities like push-ups, push-ups against the wall, push-ups on the floor, uh, some animal walks. So a wide variety of those sort of activities, again, are really useful for our children. 
Then we can also do resistive activities. So that might be something like any sort of pushing and pulling activity. For instance, a tug of war with a towel, where you pull on the one side and your child on the other side. It could be um, activities where you use a TheraBand. So that's a stretchy band that you could buy in places like Sports Direct or online, where your child pulls this band that's really stretchy. It gives them lots of really nice resistance and it can keep them busy for, for quite a long time. You could do things like hanging on monkey bars outside or a trapeze. I really like the um, chin-up bars that you can buy to hang on the inside of your door frame at home. So places like Argo sell them, they're really quite uh, affordable. But again, those are the sort of things that your child can hang on. They can do pull-ups um, and just do lots of sort of resistive, resistive activities, uh, which, is, which, which would be really good for your child. Just coming back to the TheraBand, what we can do is we can wrap it around a chair as well, the legs of a chair. So for instance, in the classroom, some children really enjoy having the TheraBand around the legs of a chair or their table, and then they can just push into that with their feet to get that resistant input. Another thing you could try is something called a body sock. So it's a piece of stretchy fabric that you buy online, and it's got a zip. So you climb into it and then you zip yourself close and then you push yourself in all directions with your arms and your legs. Lots of really good fun for the children. Um, and again, it provides a lot of that sort of resistant input that um, is great for our children. We could also use Play-Doh or Therapati because that provides lots of resistance for the hands and fingers. A great activity, of course, before you're gonna do some handwriting just because of the resistance, it will wake up the fingers, and then when the children write, they will probably apply less pressure to the page or enough pressure when they have to do the writing task. The next option is using something called heavy exercise, and that's particularly good for our older children because that could involve something like going to the gym, doing a little bit of weight training, gymnastics, it could be doing push-ups, sit-ups, any of those sort of heavy work activities. Or you could use a weighted ball. Sometimes you can buy a ball that's got a little bit of weight in it. So when you catch and throw that, that will definitely make you more aware of, of uh, what you are holding in your hands. And whilst we're talking about the weighted ball, I want to mention something else. So what you could also try is use uh, weight to make the children more aware of where they are in space. So you could wear wrist weights or ankle weights. So it goes around the ankles and the wrists. And when they catch and throw the ball or they kick the ball, then suddenly they are more aware. Because if I say to you today, take your watch off and put it on your other arm, you are going to be so much more aware of your arm for the rest of the day because it's something new, it's something different that's on your arm. And the same applies to the weight. It just makes you so much more aware of where your body parts are in space. And some children even use that before they're going to eat with a knife and fork or when they're going to do a fine motor activity. So any of those sort of tasks might be helpful before writing if you use your sort of weighted wrist cuff or ankle cuff to, to help you with that. And then we can engage in oral activities. So that's using our mouth to stimulate the system. So it could be that we would be chewing on a chewy toy. Some children really enjoy that. It just keeps the mouth busy. It could be blowing a balloon, blowing up a balloon, or blowing something with a straw, maybe a pom-pom or a piece of paper that's scrunched up. Or it could be sucking through a straw, a nice thick straw. Maybe it could be a milkshake or a thin straw, just water. It could be blowing a bubble mountain with some fairy liquid in a container. Um, it could be eating crunchy food. Uh, all those sort of things makes the mouth work hard uh, and that really helps to calm the system again. You could also chew chewing gum or maybe eat some food items like a carrot sticks or pretzels, which is nice and crunchy and that will make the mouth work hard. Uh, something else as well is when a child tends to chew lots of things, it often helps to give them a water bottle that they can have on their desk at home and in school. And it needs to have a spout that's quite difficult to suck out of. 
so that the mouth really works hard to get the liquid out. So if they constantly keep the mouth busy and on the go, they'll have less of a need to chew all these other things that we don't want them to chew. So lastly, what I want you to keep in mind with proprioceptive activities is that they can work in both ways. So if we think about our glass of water, it can help children that's got a glass empty, but also children that's got a full glass of water. So it can calm the nervous system, but it can also help to alert the nervous system if a child is quite lethargic. Uh, I once went to a course many years ago, and the lady that presented this course said, if you don't know what to do, try and do some proprioceptive activities. So always keep that in mind.